So, uh, you want to see a satisfying double kill that I had? Okay, cool. Watch this. All right, anyway, season 14 is off to a pretty fun start. There are new objectives, new items, and a new season of good old solo queue. It has been fun to test things out over this last month, but now that we're on the second patch of the year and players have had time to figure some things out, I think it's pretty clear that there are some real winners in terms of power. The game, as it stands, is kind of all over the place in terms of balance, with some true Exodia tier champions and strategies. So today, I'm here to break it down for you. This is a new series on this channel that I'll be starting for every single patch for the rest of Season 14 all throughout this year. These are the builds and champs that are dominating games. Welcome to Episode 1 of Building Better. The first strategy that I want to talk about are the APC enchanters and mages in the bot lane. Cupix sort of started the trend at the beginning of the season running double support in the bot lane, and the strategy was so OP that it was even seen in pro play taking over the meta, with champions like Lucian AD Carry stacking the support item. This was extremely unhealthy and very OP, and it was nerfed on 14.2, effectively being removed from the game. Now with double support being removed, I'd be willing to bet that a lot of players will think that AP carries in the bot lane are dead, but that is absolutely not true. Champions such as Lux, Seraphine, and Hui can still be played very effectively in bot even without the support item. The way that the meta has shaped around them has allowed them to succeed this year. Right now League is in a very topside focused game state with a lot of early fights and skirmishes over the grubs. Grubs are so important and valuable that many games in higher ranks are won or lost over the fight that will ensue on the top side of the map at 5 minutes. Now because of this, a bot lane mage that can hold their own as the support runs top for the grubs is very valuable. Jinx in the early game does not have the range, safety, or wave clear to be left alone, but Huey can be pretty much left alone for the most part. Another reason is that even without the support item, the inherent supportive properties of a Lux or Seraphine slots very nicely into your team comp, even if you have an AP mid or jungle, as the meta right now involves a lot of high damage champions. Akali, Rengar, Riven, and Jax, just to name a few. This both works out to support your carries with a Moonstone and Shielding build, as well as denying the one-shotting assassins on the enemy team too. Your job as Lux is to make sure that the assassins can't do their job. Finally, generally speaking, the crit items feel pretty weak compared to other options. A traditional crit marksman like a Caitlyn with a build using Storm Razor into Infinity Edge is not necessarily unplayable at the moment, but this setup is also clearly not top tier right now and overperforming the way that other champions in the bot lane are. All of these factors have led me to believe that if you can play these enchanter mages, their best role at the moment is in the bottom lane rather than a typical mid or support that you may have played them in in previous metas. The next champion I want to go over is Ari. Ari got hit pretty hard with the new season as her most popular mythic over the last couple of years was removed in Everfrost. The Everfrost item was great for her as it comboed very nicely with the charm, either extending the CC chain or helping her to land it more consistently. This item was everything that she needed, and now that mana mages have lost Leandris to being a health item, there weren't a lot of immediately great choices to build on her. This caused her win rate to drop by a significant margin, however this is also why it's incredibly hard to judge win rates during the first parts of the season. Win rate is not everything, especially considering how many players are not building the correct items on each champ when there's tons of changes. Due to how low her win rate was, she got buffed on this patch, but I'm not convinced that she needed it. This is where Legit Korea comes in. He's a multi-time challenger Ari player who came up with a build right away that helped out Ari substantially, rushing Lichbane into Ludens, utilizing Ingenious Hunter to proc the items more often. And after trying out the build myself, I gotta say, the damage is pretty sick. Lichbane is finally a great item in the meta, and is even being nerfed on the next patch, which is something I never thought I would hear, since most champions did not build Lichbane for the last two years. It's very strong point and click damage where you sort of just auto W auto and win big trades on Ari. Also because of grubs existing, if you split for tower damage, you can easily take them down. Your cooldowns are low enough to be a strong threat in the side lane taking the turret, and you're very slippery and you can get away if players collapse on you. There's a couple of different rune pages that you can run with the champion, with the most standard being Electrocute and Minion Dematerializer, and using the new Triple Tonic. Now you may run into some mana issues with the Lichbane Rush, and this is where a lot of the skill comes into play. If you end up wasting all of your spells, you will run yourself out of mana without Mana Flow Band and a mana item first. You have to be able to last hit with your auto attacks. 
Ingenious Hunter has grown in popularity with the new season as there are a lot of different items that benefit from the item haste now. Players have caught on to how good it is. I don't think that Ari is top tier even after the buff she received on 14.2 but she is far from weak so you shouldn't be afraid to play her even without Everfrost. The next champion is one that has finally worked his way back into the meta after being absent for a very long time, and he even has two very distinct builds. Nemesis has been playing it, Pobelter has been playing it, and Chovy picked it in the very first game of the year for Genji against T1 in the LCK. After a few weeks of players testing out the champion, I think he's officially become OP. Welcome back to the meta, Corky. The first build option is using a keystone that you may not expect. Hail of Blades. The attack speed lets you win quick little trades, and given the build that we're specking into, the autos will hurt, with items like Eclipse, Trinity Force, Sundered Sky, Mura Mana, and of course, Ingenious Hunter again. Ingenious reduces all of your cooldowns on these items, and this quirky build becomes an absolute menace. In the LCK, Chovy showed us the other build, this time going back to First Strike, which is the rune that the champion ran over the last couple of years, and instead of Trinity Force, we're looking at a full poke mage quirky with the new item Malignance. Malignance gained a lot of popularity on Teemo during the start of the year, but he got immediately nerfed due to how strong he was with the Shrooms, but Riot may have forgot to nerf the Corkster. The Rockets become a mega low cooldown with constant procs on the item, and it's insane how much damage output he has. I'd say specifically for solo queue, I tend to prefer the build with Halo Blades and Trinity Force. I think there's a lot more immediate power and 1v1 potential, but you still can build Malignance even with Halo Blades, and I've seen Poe Belter do that recently. In the top lane, there are two styles of champions that are seeing success so far. The first is the absolutely broken combination of tank items that will turn anybody into an unkillable god, Frozen Heart and Kanic Rookern. Frozen Heart was so OP on the previous patch that it ended up getting nerfed, so it must be reasonable now, right? Well, not really, because the nerf was only making the item 100 more gold, so it is still insane. Frozen Heart is the best armor item in the game, and the best MR item is Kanic Rookern, which gives a huge magic damage shield to completely negate any AP champion's hopes and dreams. Two mega tanks that I have seen benefit the most from this combo are Udyr and Cassante. These two guys are so much tankier than they were last season that it will catch a lot of players off guard. You'll think you'll be able to do damage to them, and then only to realize that they're completely indestructible. Another underrated item that we'll get into a little bit more when talking about supports is the new Zeke's Convergence. After many years of Zeke's being an item that links to an ally and was almost exclusively built by supports, it's a little different now. It's now an extremely cheap option that's perfect for a champion like Malphite. Not necessarily as a first item, but it's great if you're on very low income and have just enough for it before a crucial teamfight. The way it works now is casting your ultimate creates a storm that deals damage and slows for 5 seconds. If you ever get Malphite ulted, there is absolutely no escape, as even if you flash afterwards, he will always catch up to you due to the slow. The other class of champions that are seeing a lot of play are bruisers that are usually building a combination of items like Sundered Sky, Eclipse, and Spear of Sojin. Fiora, Riven, Aatrox, and Jax are performing so well right now and can become crazy strong carries when ahead. Just like with Corky, Eclipse is definitely part of the reason these champions are dominating, and on 14.3 the item will see a nerf, and rightfully so. The constant shielding, healing, and damage from all of these bruisers is absolutely ridiculous when they have their Conqueror fully stacked, but at the same time, without the likes of Fiora and Riven to deal with the tanks, what is going to stop the unkillable Frozen Heart Kanic Rookern champions? This is the true dichotomy of top lane. You either pick a tank or somebody who can kill the tank and make their laning phase impossible. Next on the list, Hubris. Now, that's basically in a tier all on its own. And I know what you're thinking, Kellen, that's an item, that's not a champion. And I know, my point is, if your champion can build Hubris, then your champ is probably very good right now because that item is insane. Champions such as Draven, Rengar, Misfortune, Jin, Graves, and several others are loving this item. I really should take the time to properly explain it because I've seen many players confused by how it works, and honestly that's Riot's fault since they completely screwed up its tooltip and made it very hard to understand. This is the item that will create statues of your champion in base, but you can completely ignore that as it makes it way more confusing than it needs to be. So just forget the statues. What the item does is it gives you AD, haste, and lethality, and then when you get takedowns, it gives you even more attack damage temporarily for 90 seconds. I've heard a lot of players describe this as the sort of AD equivalent to Magi's, but you don't really lose anything for dying. Even if you die, you don't lose the stacks. They will go away after 90 seconds regardless. Effectively, the item is closer to being a Vagar passive, but for AD. 
Throughout the sheer chaos and destruction that is solo queue, slowly but surely, this item is going to start giving you well over 100 attack damage. Even if it's temporary, that is still an absurd amount. I think Riot will need to nerf the AD gained from it back down to 1 per stack. Now that players actually know how the item works, they're building it a lot more, or make it so you only gain the stacks for 60 seconds or something like that. Solo queue just runs at such a ridiculously fast pace that a champion like Rengar is basically playing the entire game with the stacks turned on. This is also why in terms of proper marksman AD carries, current builds that are stronger for them are the lethality options. That's why I recommend lethality, misfortune, draven, and Jin over something like a standard jinx or Sivir build at the moment. And a big reason for that, of course, is just how strong hubris is. Speaking of game warping items, Trailblazer has already been nerfed once, and it's probably still not enough. For both lower ranks and higher elos, Maokai support is doing very well, currently holding the number one win rate in the game for support. Now it's true that one of the reasons that Maokai is so strong at the moment and is doing well in the win rate department is because he's very easy to play. You better believe if this champion is ever strong, players are going to win games on him as he's effectively the lowest skill floor champion in the game, right up there with something like Garen. But really a lot of his power is also coming from Trailblazer. It has insane value providing a ton of movement speed to the team, making Maokai engages in point and click CC even more deadly than normal. There are a few players who have made this work all the way up into Master and beyond, but I would still say that the skew for Maokai's support should be in the lower ranks. He's easily one of the best supports to climb through low elo games with, but if you're looking for a higher elo and a more skill expression champion, you can take a look at Rakan and Bard with Trailblazer. These two supports are doing exceptionally well, and when it comes to Rakan, there's just so many good item options. Trailblazer, Koenig, Frozen Heart, and the Zeeks that we talked about are all amazing for him. Every year it just feels like the support role becomes more and more powerful, and Rakan and Bard are taking over challenger games. The final build that I have for you today is a slight rune optimization for Echo, which in all honesty probably should have been taken the entire time. Hail of Blades. My little story with this build is honestly pretty funny. You see, I got run over in mid lane playing against this as Cassidan. I figured this would be a decent matchup for Cassidan as it's an AP mid laner who's melee and is more or less going to just let me farm and scale. Over the last couple of years, most Echo mid players have played very passive in lane, usually running a setup like First Strike, Minion Dematerializer, and Teleport, playing for the full scaling and wave clear. With that type of setup, it should be very favorable for Cassidan as I'm going to be able to get my items and he's not going to poke me out of lane. But that's not at all what happened. My ego isn't so big that I can't admit that I played bad this game. I lost lane insanely hard. But after watching the replay, I really thought to myself out loud, wow, that looked like it had no counterplay. He sort of just ease onto you level 1, takes your entire health bar, and then the laning phase is over. And it's not like I really just didn't want to give this guy credit for playing well, because he did play well, but I tried to analyze it and really look if there was something that I majorly messed up on, and it honestly just looked like his champ was unfair. I then went to check his match history, and sure enough, yep, he got MVP three games in a row with insane scores in each one. So being the curious player that I am, even though I'm not an Echo player and I am truly about the furthest thing from an Echo one trick, I figured, you know what, screw it, I'll try out the build. And I played two games of it and got MVP both times. And it was at this point I basically realized that if I were any good at Echo whatsoever, and if I put some practice into him, this is basically just an ELO generator. This build is not balanced. It's not fair. And if you have any skill on the champion, please use this setup with Hail of Blades. It takes almost no skill to win your lane. And if I can win some games on it, considering that I have no idea how to play Echo, I have less than like 10 to 15 games all time of him, then imagine what somebody who mains Echo could do. And it's not just one or two Echo players using Hail of Blades now. I've seen Davemon win a bunch of games with it, and the best Echo in China is also running this setup now. It is super strong. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this first episode of Building Better. I'll be posting videos like these discussing the metagame every single patch in 2024, sometimes even multiple videos a week going over currently strong setups. And if you have any suggestions for this series or if you think it's a good idea, please let me know. Also, come check out my Twitch where I'll be streaming some more Season 14 and vibing with you guys in the chat. I'm a non-toxic, relaxing, chill streamer with a huge emphasis on engaging with my chat and my community and not flaming my team. If that sounds like something you'll enjoy, you'll definitely have fun checking out my stream. Thank you. Love you and have a great day.